Muhtar Nurlay Çıkışı'yla hazırda. Bizim için büyük mesuliyetli ve bu mesuliyetin karşısında hazırlık. Biz hamıya beraber imkanlar vermeye hazırlık. Biz sizinle bir de mektarlık ve memnun olalım. Bir geçtirmeye bildirilir. From the surveys and experiences of past COP host countries, we know that logistics and operations have always posed challenges for all COPs. All of the host countries have been able to resolve these issues collaboratively. With six months still ahead of us, we are here to gather your concerns and recommendations. I would like to take this opportunity to extend our gratitude to the co-presidency teams Amen. from UK, Egypt and United Arab Emirates for their Amen. kind support and sharing their Amen. experiences with us. We will ensure that the valuable lessons learned through our own experience and conveyed to Brazil as the host of the next conference, COP30 in Belém. Let me now introduce Madame Nermi, the Chief Operating Officer for COP29 Azerbaijan, who along with the team will provide information about the logistics and operational preparation. From the snow-capped peaks of the Caucasus, to the endless sandy shores of the Blue Caspian Sea. There lies the astonishing Azerbaijan. Discover an unforgettable country. Four delightful seasons. Nine out of the eleven climatic zones. Within 60 regions of amazing nature, traditions, and cuisine. About 70 ancient and modern cities. With rich history, architecture, and great cultural heritage. Operations. 
operational functions to build necessary facilities, uplift visitor journey, and support the overall goals of the conference in Baku. We are very excited to share those plans with you today and to continue our positive engagement together along the journey to November. Distinguished delegates, as previously announced, we are excited that Baku Stadium will host uh, COP29 in November in Baku. This location has a proven track record of hosting diverse community and global events over the past nine years. Adapting an existing venue to the needs of the event is in line with our sustainability goals and values. Located just six kilometers from the city center, it is positioned at one of Baku's main transportation hubs. It is also in close proximity to metro and public bus stations, as well as taxi stands and extensive parking facilities. Baku Stadium will host both the Blue Zone and Green Zone and activations at one convenient location. As you are aware, the Blue Zone will host the formal negotiations across the two weeks of the conference as well as the World Leaders Climate Action Summit, the country pavilions, presidency initiatives, side events, including panel discussions, round tables, cultural events, and media engagements. There will be three available packages for country pavilions. We ask that the interested parties to submit their expression of interest to us by June 15. You can also approach our team in the Azerbaijani stand during one session in this regard. Ladies and gentlemen, dear party delegates, observers, media representatives, please mark your calendars. The official dates of the conference are confirmed to be on November 11 to 22. The World Leaders Climate Action Summit has been agreed to be held on November 12 and 13. The COP pre-sessional will be organized one week prior to the conference from November 4 to 10. The pre-COP has been scheduled for the 10th and 11th of October and will supplement the negotiations and support the goals of the conference. We will now turn to a brief discussion of the guest experience at COP29 with a touch point on protocol and logistic arrangements for the heads of state and heads of government. Accommodation arrangements for the mentioned segment will be handled on a one plus three format and will be financed by the government of Azerbaijan. For the arrival at the Blue Zone, the three cars format is applied on vehicle provi uh, provision for your meeting. Dedicated liaison officers for country delegates will also be provided to facilitate your stay in Guam. Now, I would like to continue with a discussion of the guest service and journey that we are building to provide a seamless and positive delegate experience in Baku. As a significant milestone towards building our guest service operations, the COP29 accommodation and booking platform has been designed to ensure that the range of room types, prices, and locations will be available to people who want to attend the event. The accommodation options included in the program have been selected based on quality, pricing, location, sustainability, and transportation services that will be arranged for the conference. We have ensured that preferential rates are available at a wide range of facilities in Baku and surrounding areas. While we encourage the use of this special service, delegates are also free to make their arrangements through different platforms. Another milestone by the operations team towards the provision of the international military experience at COP29 is the launch of COP29 Special E-Visa Service. The COP29 Special E-Visa Service is a dedicated, hassle-free, sustainable, fast and complementary E-Visa service for the UNFCCC accredited visitors traveling to Azerbaijan. This dedicated service is another demonstration of the hospitality that we are excited to extend to our dear guests. I would like to note that delegates and UN accredited parties will be eligible to apply for visa upon accreditation confirmation by the UN and platform will be activated in accordance with the UNFCCC 
language managed registration process for COP29. Available in 12 languages, this service will help visitors to obtain their visa within just three business days. Now I would like you to, I would like to brief you about certain transportation arrangements. All flights to Baku will arrive at and depart from the Hyderabad International Airport. The airport's four terminals and two runways will be fully utilized throughout the event. Travel options between Hyderabad International Airport and the city center will include COP29 dedicated airport shuttle service between the airport and transport hubs to be arranged by the accommodation booking platform. Airport express public bus service between the airport and the city center. Dedicated airport taxis to be available around the globe in front of each terminal. All accredited delegates are eligible to use public buses, metro and railway services to travel across the city free of charge, alongside dedicated event shuttles from accommodation facilities to the venue and back throughout the conference. Bus frequencies will be adjusted dynamically throughout the day based on the passenger demand. In keeping with the event's guiding star, our shared climate goals, COP29 is building its operations across all functions according to our key pillars, sustainability, inclusivity, and accessibility. Sustainable operations include the appropriate calculation, mitigation, and offsetting mechanisms of our carbon footprint. We will regularly monitor and report on the emissions directly and indirectly generated by the operations throughout the event. We will also prioritize the promotion of a culture of respect and inclusivity, ensure diverse representations in speakers and panels, and facilitate participation from underrepresented groups. Our accessibility measures will include accessible venue and logistics, facilities, transport, city, and digital assets. Just as we work to ensure that COP29 has a positive impact on our planet through climate action and on our international guests, we are also considering the impact this event might have on Baku and beyond. Our legacy program mainly focuses on capacity and confidence building, awareness programs, and reuse of the logistics and infrastructure items. We hope that COP29 will leave a positive lasting legacy by building human capital, enhancing infrastructure, and sustainable, fostering sustainable development in our country. Another st a strong asset we have as a COP29 host is our sustainable catering and diversified menu. Azerbaijan stands out for each for its rich cuisine. We are confident that we will capture your taste. As a, uh, we are looking forward to sharing our incredible Azerbaijani cuisine with guests, as well as making a range of food options available across international cuisine and considering dietary needs and restrictions. As in all event preparations, we will all also prioritize sustainability, in this case, through local and seasonal sources vegetarian and vegetarian. In addition to the formal UN organized blue zone, as a host country, Azerbaijan will also provide an opportunity for the international community and NGOs to be presented in the green zone. The green zone which will be located adjacent to the blue zone will offer an informal space for youth leaders, businesses, activists, researchers, artists and others to come together and share their concerns and ideas through presentations, panel debates, poster sessions, exhibitions, and more. To participate in the Green Zone, again, please submit an expression of interest detailing your organization's proposal, any pertinent information, and links to your website. Distinguished guests, today's briefing has been intended to be a comprehensive update on the significant progress we have made towards preparing for this global event, as well as our plans and priorities going forward. Of course, in this journey, we are also lucky to have the professional team of UNFCCC, who is always supporting us and sharing their expertise. Using this opportunity, I would like to extend my deepest gratitude to them on behalf of our team. 
Let me ensure that we will regularly review and update our policies based on feedbacks from participants, advancements in best practices, and we will consider your input. As you have witnessed after this presentation, our country has a lot to offer as a COP29 host destination with its unique components of diversity, multicultural society, historical heritage, and forward vision. Our experienced and dedicated team organizing the conference logistics and services is excited to host COP29 and to welcome you all in Azerbaijan. I conclude my presentation with a short video on the ongoing journey of COP29 presidency to be followed by a Q&A session with my team members. Excellencies, dear friends, we invite all of you to come together in Baku this November in solidarity for a green world. Thank you. Thank you very much for the presentation. Um, my name is Hasbun Romberg. I'm with the Secretariat of the Pacific Community here on the Marshall Islands delegation. Um, I've been coming to COPs for quite a long time. In fact, I was at COP1. Um, and I've experienced uh, challenges over the years, so I decided to make bookings for our organizations while we're still in Dubai once the dates were set. Uh, we got a very good price. We guaranteed it by credit card. Uh, in April, we received an email informing us that the hotel will not be available for a variety of reasons. Uh, so we began checking for alternatives. And just for you know, out of curiosity, I checked. I found that the hotel, in fact, was actually available, uh, but the price was now five times higher than originally. Um, we've been also looking at the website, and the prices on the hotels there are rather astronomical and they're not even close to what they would be normally. So I think the claim of stable accommodation rates is a bit uh, stretched. Uh, another key issue is that this is problematic for us uh, when we are planning our attendance 
um, and budgeting, uh, because uh, the hotel prices far outstrip what is in the official DSA rate, and this makes it very difficult for us to um, to figure out, um, first of all, how many we can bring, and second of all, um, uh, the internal processes of trying to get our finance people to agree to an astronomical DSA rate. Uh, so I'd like to hear how uh, the COP uh, presidency uh, intends to um, perhaps uh, curb uh, this price gouging that's happening. Thank you very much. Okay, thank you for that question. I'm just going to group a couple of questions just for efficiency so we can get to our speakers. So next I'll hand over to Switzerland. If you do want to take the floor, you need to press the button first. Yes. Hi, do you hear me? Oh, yes. Uh, thank you very much for the presentation and thank you so much for all the work you've already done. Um, yeah, we wanted to take the floor because we do share a bit the same concern as the Marshall Islands. Uh, we did our bookings already for the delegations and we realized that the prices were not in line with our reference prices for Azerbaijan usually. And um, yeah, we just wanted to share this concern that we feel like there is a strong hike in prices at the moment. Um, also, I think it was addressed during uh, Mrs. Yashalova's presentation, but uh, there is a minimum stay of six nights uh, for participants, and for our ministers and high-level officials from the government. And we do not see why we have to book six nights. Uh, so maybe this is more of a question if you know anything about it, if there will be other options to book for them. Thank you very much. Okay, I'm going to take one more question before I hand over to the um, to the team here. So um, the person behind uh, nameplate two five seven. Thank you. I'm Lana Wagenen with ProVeg International. Last year, ProVeg worked together with the Yango constituency of Global Children and Youth and its Food at Cop campaign. Um, from the SBs through to uh, the COP conference to move towards more sustainable catering with a higher percentage of plant-based food at COP, which was successfully served and has set a new bar for how we can have more sustainable food at the climate conference and show this example. This year we've sent an open letter request on behalf of 250 NGOs and officially made the request of the COP29 presidency. If you can engage together with us again from civil society and youth to show this positive example and leadership, we have a concrete percentage committed and delivered a majority of plant-based food as this was applauded and positively received last year. And we see this opportunity for Azerbaijan to still build upon and show further leadership in this. So the question is um, if the COP29 presidency and particularly the sustainability team could engage with us again to show this example of um, sustainable catering at COP29. Thank you um, and we'd be happy to meet more and discuss more after. Okay, let me hand over to the team for responses to those questions and then we'll be taking some more questions after that. Thank you. Uh, I would like to answer questions on your accommodation concerns. Actually, the concern of uh, Marshall Island Islands has been shared by UNICEF uh, with us before and uh, we also expressed that we are uh, looking forward to uh, checking what was the problem and we would like to help you after our briefing if you could share us with your reservation confirmation uh, so that we could uh, reach out to the hotel facility who created such kind of challenge. For visa interpretation infrastructure in all negotiation groups and side event groups. Additionally, we would like to know what the measures will be to ensure the accessibility for people with disabilities as well as for facilities for groups to practice their religion and spirituality. Thank you. Thank you very much for those questions. I'm now going to hand over to the delegates of Ghana. Thank you so much. Um, thank you for the incoming presidency for, for the presentation. I think um, on behalf of my delegation, we also have um, concerns regarding the accommodation, which has already been raised. Um, to be honest, I wasn't convinced with the 
with the response that was given um, regarding the accommodation and the pricing. And so I think if you can actually look deeper into it and then probably um, give us concrete guidance so that we can be able to, because we've experienced it before and we don't want to go through it again this time. Um, my next issue has to do with um, transit visa, because um, a lot of our delegation, even though you are facilitating an easy access of visa, which is good, and I want to commend you for that effort. Then there, there will be a lot of people who will be traveling through other airports. Um, is there any concrete advice or guidance as to um, especially through the Shingen State, where I know most of the um, travelers will be connecting through? And the last one has to do with um, transportation in um, in Azerbaijan or in Baku. You did mention um, the facilitation of arrival from the airport to the location that's taken somewhere. But I didn't say much about the internal um, transportation that has been for the event itself, um, for the days. I think um, it will be important to have better understanding. Thank you so much. We have a growing list of speakers, so I'm not going to hand the floor to Nigeria. Okay, thank you very much, um, Azerbaijan, for uh, you know being the incoming presidency for the COP. Um, from what we know um, in uh, and uh, there were. Shamashek and then of course um, uh, Dubai, we know that in Dubai there was a doubling of the number of participants that attended in Shamashek. In Dubai we had about, uh, from official record, about 85,000 people that attended and it could actually be more than that. So, um, and that could also be attributable to the fact that, you know, with the easing of COVID-19, there is potential for more participation moving forward. And to that extent, it's also possible that more than that number will also be coming to Baku. So the question here is, um, what uh, do, do you, does the country, or uh, Baku surrounding have enough accommodation, you know, that covers more than that number of 85,000 foreigners? And then, um, Given what we have heard on the ground, uh, that you know, uh, uh, price of hotels are spiraling. Uh, what are the other nearest cities to Baku, you know, that could also be made use of by delegations, and also uh, with transportation uh, be made available for participants from those countries, uh, from those uh, uh, other nearby cities. Then also regarding the issue of expression of uh, interest for use of green so we, I mean this briefing is just taking place today and you have said that the time is June 15th which is next week. So um, we think that it might be very necessary to make an extension to that to enable uh, uh, participants also report back and uh, galvanize uh, action for submission. Thank you. Thank you. I'm now going to hand back to the incoming president for response to those questions. Thank you, uh, Dr. Um, regarding the question from the Women and Gender Statistics, um, I would like to ensure that uh, international youth and children, and children including indigenous peoples, will be welcome and uh, represented in Azerbaijan. In this regard, we are closely working with our youth climate champion and also our high climate champion to get the concerns of the mentioned uh, categories of people. Uh, and uh, the same question from the, same, uh, from the delegate about the extension of the deadline for the booking uh, platform, uh, for the, or the extension of deadline of the hotel accommodation, uh, we can uh, 
take into consideration your concern and we can see how we could address to your issue. And I would like to you to approach us after this event so that we could uh, find solutions uh, for your internal uh, procedures. Uh, as for the land uh, order, I would like to pass the floor to my uh, colleague Sharma to uh, elaborate on that. So, um, thank you for your question. Um, when it comes to the uh, uh, when it comes to the question on land border, we understand that yes, uh, the borders are closed now. We are looking into the issue, uh, and we will update you on the status of the process. Uh, so we are working to make sure that your arrival to Baku is as smooth as possible, and we are aware of the uh, different groups, uh, youth with women and gender groups or youth groups, uh, whom we want, are, whom we are uh, dearly willing to see in Azerbaijan, and we are also closely working with UNFCCC on that regard, and we are receiving uh, through the UNFCCC we are receiving your requests as well. And uh, on our part, we are trying to uh, address the issues. And as Ms. Jarchalva said, you are uh, free to approach us after the uh, briefings, and uh, we'll try to work closely with you to make sure that your concerns are tackled. And I would like, uh, I think, the table is question on the practice, on practicing religious activity in the blue zone. Uh, under host country agreement, all the religious practices uh, will be uh, ensured. And uh, as you, as I mentioned in my presentation, Azerbaijan is a tolerant and multicultural society, and all religious groups are welcome in our country. Thank you. I would like to highlight regarding the last point mentioned in the speech of the woman and gender regarding the interpretations. Of course, we will the interpretation services for the six languages stipulated by the UN policy, but we also have the commercial translation interpretation services, and it will be provided on a commercial basis, but for the sensitive groups, if you apply directly, we can consider that how to make it affordable for this group of the people. Regarding the other issues, I would like to uh, highlight that there is a special visa, COVID-29 electronic visa, and it will be much simplified the procedure that you can apply and all the parties and uh, all the delegates can use this and uh, all, everybody will be granted for the visa. Uh, and uh, regarding the transit visa, uh, we cannot interfere for other countries, but as far as I'm going to travel to through the Schengen states, we will use the natural areas as the airport areas. And therefore, uh, we can also guarantee that we can provide the visas, electronic visas in advance. And we are therefore, we are kindly ask you to follow our website, we need people see websites regarding the updates on the visa. Regarding the transportation issues, I would like to clarify because it is the, the, I would like to provide this more details. Then. All the delegates arriving to Baku Airport in Hyderabad uh, will be uh, delivered directly to their accommodations, uh, nearby hubs, and also to venue with the intercity shuttles and the back with the intercity shuttles. From the venue area to the accommodations and the vice versa, from the accommodation to the venue area, also the new Baku city uh, buses and all the transportation are for free and also delegates can be granted with the special uh, transport cards that they will allow them to travel within the city with the, with the metro and the railways, of course. And therefore, we urge uh, and uh, ask you, when you look to accommodation perspectives, not try to have the closer ones, to look the closer ones or the chain hotels, because we have the, on the countryside, just the 25, 30 minutes <coughs> driving, because we will arrange the every single comfortable buses and uh, every single manage the perfectly, and the you should also look the uh, suburban areas of the Baku, seaside areas, there is a 
market, the resort hotel is very affordable prices. And therefore, we mostly, we, what we are hearing here, that mostly the delegates are looking for the chain hotels within the city center, and of course, the pricing is formulated for the demand and supply curves, and we cannot interfere as a government directly to this process, but of course, we are doing our best to make them affordable and to make this event inclusive. Thank you for your question on inclusivity measures that COVID-19 is taking towards the event. Uh, and that will let us to elaborate more on all of the measures that we are uh, implementing in close uh, alignment with UNFCCC dedicated teams, applying best practices and uh, know-how and experience from previous COPs. Uh, we will treat uh, and apply sustainability and accessibility measures um, in different areas, including and not limited to um, in inclusive uh, and accessible venue, uh, accessible transport, accessible city, uh, as well accessible and um, inclusive catering, and also accessible signage venue infrastructure, and also accessible digital platforms uh, that will be um, uh, utilized for during the COP29 event. Uh, in terms of um, accessible venue, uh, we uh, not only ac assess and establish the data and the existing baseline, we uh, are working and modeling uh, the potential ways on how to improve uh, the accessibility of the venue's infrastructure, interior and exterior infrastructure, and also the accessible signage. Uh, we are also uh, applying different certain venue facilities uh, in PSAs and uh, uh, all around the venue and in plenary rooms for accessible groups. Uh, and also, as I mentioned, uh, all the digital platforms as for the NFCCC uh, host country agreement will be uh, in line with accessibility rules. Uh, and also our transportation, as we mentioned, will be uh, well arranged and well planned according to the accessibility guidelines. And our online <coughs> venue will be well trained in terms of communication and uh, assistance for accessible groups. Thank you very much. Now I would like to answer the question that was uh, uh, delivered by the delegate regarding the increasing number of the participants in each post. Uh, as in five years, of course, we expect tens of uh, thousands of attendees, including heads of state, heads of government, dignitaries, as well as delegates and representatives of civil societies and intergovernmental organizations uh, and the media. Uh, but uh, we are not focused on, the com on comparing COP29 to previous COPs. We are focused on supporting the goals of the conference and hosting a world-class event that supports the goal is transparency, inclusivity, and hospitality. And uh, our colleague from uh, Ghana uh, was uh, asking about accommodation. Uh, I would like to give uh, some details about the available options, uh, which are affordable, considering PSA rate uh, for Azerbaijan. Uh, we have uh, some apartments that were uh, placed by the government of Azerbaijan in order to meet your price expectations. Uh, we have uh, apartments close to the venue. Uh, I don't know whether it is appropriate for me to mention the names of the facility. And also there are, some, uh, there are hotel uh, facility options uh, in, uh, uh, around the seaside. Uh, uh, there is a resort which uh, meets the price requirement. And also we have two star, three star hotels, uh, which are below uh, 100 US uh, dollars, uh, which is also in line with PSA rate for Azerbaijan. Thank you. Uh, there was one final question on the deadline. Uh, yes, there was a question from delegate. Uh, thank you for your question. Uh, I think there was a kind of misunderstanding in terms of uh, delivered presentation. Uh, the presentation was stating that the deadline for uh, blue zone delegate pavilions expression of interest uh, is June, 20, June 15th and the application started uh, as of May. Uh, the application process for green zone participation and expression of interest uh, is currently being conducted via the email address green zone pavilion, pavilions at co29.az uh, and this will, this process will uh, continue for the at least for the period of one ne next month and one more month. 
So there is no uh, time constraint in terms of applying and participating when the co-29 goes on. Thank you. Thank you, I think it's time for some more questions. I'm going to hand over to the bingo Scotch farmers of Surma constituency. Thank you very much, um, Beth Martin. I'm actually the focal point for the research and independent NGO constituency. We're sitting in different spots, so apologies for that. First, I wanted to thank you. We're excited about the opportunity to, to visit Azerbaijan. Like a beautiful country, and we're excited to be there. Um, I do have several questions. Um, we appreciate that we can book through other platforms um, and appreciate that we can also book at further distances. However, many have done so with favorable rates and locations and cancellation terms, but yet those have been canceled. Many have current bookings and are in fear of cancellation for those bookings. Um, we would like to have some confidence that existing bookings would not be canceled. But given that fear, many have begun to look at the platform as a way in which to book lodging. Um, however, there are challenges with the platform, maybe some unique to NGOs, but we'd like to echo the six night minimum challenge. We also want to note the cancellation challenges and the lack of ability to have cancellations. Um, and get particular given that NGOs do not know of their badge status allocation until generally sometime late into September. Um, also note the challenge that the deposit, not, not a deposit, but the rooms have to be paid for in full in short term. And given the inability to cancel and the need to pay in full, it's not doable for many of the NGO um, participants. Um, so we'd like to have some kind of sense that the current are not being canceled. Well, current existing bookings outside the platform won't be canceled, but also we would echo um, extension of cancellation rates and more flexibility in terms of deposits for those that do choose to go through the booking. Um, you also mentioned transport. It is hard to book accommodations at further distances from the venue if we don't know where the transport hubs are. So it would be appreciated to have the information on those transport hub locations in a timely fashion to um, facilitate um, booking. Also with transportation, you said there would be intercity buses, but the question I would have is, are those buses dedicated for COP29, or is it just that COP29 participants can access existing intercity buses? Um, and yes, that is all of my questions at this point in time. Thank you very much, I appreciate it. Thank you for those questions. I'm not gonna hand over to Gabon. Thank you, thank you, thank you, Secretary for being in the room. I would like, first of all, to congratulate, of course, uh, the COP29 coming presidency for the detailed uh, uh, presentation and also for the video made. And I hope that it will also be made available uh, either online or, <laughs> or somewhere for us to have. Uh, I would also like to extend our country's commitment to participating to COP29 and to ensure that it is a success in Baku. Um, I have a short comment, it's not really a question. So I work at the presidency of my country. So I'd like to know, um, I would request that the information on the high level um, accommodation are being made available quite soon so that we can make all the arrangements in terms of protocol. Uh, so yeah, that's about it. And again, uh, congratulations. I know you've been given a really short time frame to arrange all of this, but it's, for me, it's the first time that I'm seeing, seeing all the information uh, uh, uploaded so early. So uh, congratulations again. Thank you for that. I'm gonna hand over to, I'm gonna hand over to the Ringo Tongo of the other group. Thank you very much. Good afternoon. My name is Andrea Sieber from 350.org, and in fact, we are part of the Anglo constituency. There's a bit of a mix up with the mics there. Um, my questions are on the COP29 organizing committee. First, could you elaborate on the role of Azerbaijan Secret Service in the committee? I ask this in the context of this having a chilling effect on civil society, specifically given the limitations of civic space arrest of journalists and members of civil society in Azerbaijan. Secondly, could you further clarify how the participation of the president of the state oil company of the Republic of Azerbaijan 
so car in the organizing committee does not constitute a conflict of interest given the company's plan to expand fossil fuels and lacking any credible plan for transition at this moment. And finally, we detailed these concerns and questions in a letter dated in March, signed also by 150 other organizations, and we still look forward to reply from the presidency. Thanks. Okay, I'm going to take one more question from specialized agencies, uh, number five. While you're free to ask any questions, I do, um, this is a logistical reason, so please try and focus on logistics. Thank you very much. My name is Amir from the World Meteorological Organization and UN System Specialized Agency. The UN system is exempt from value added tax. My question is Is there any agreement between the host country and the UN system on VAT exemption and a unified invoicing policy by service providers? Okay, thank you very much for a range of questions there. I'll hand over to the team for those. Uh, yes, thank you, Fatima. I'll take the very first question regarding the accommodation and the challenges uh, with booking and cancellation and six nights. Um, the platform was introduced in order to make sure there is no uh, further manipulation uh, with the process. So um, the platform already addressed it, uh, the, the, your challenges with regard to price coaching. Um, on our part, we are working meticulously to add uh, more, uh, more accommodation options to the platform uh, so that your concerns concerns with regards to the price uh, range is covered. Um, this, the same, uh, the same uh, logic is behind the six night, uh, six night book minimum uh, days of six nights. So we are trying to make sure that uh, uh, there, 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 are, um, there, are, there is no manipulation and every, all the relevant, all the participants of uh, the COP29 uh, conference are well accommodated in Baku. Um, when it comes to the extension of the cancellation and uh, your uh, your own limitations with regard to payment and etc., uh, we are uh, open to uh, we are open to further conversation after this meeting to understand where it comes from and whether we can accommodate your concern. Uh, but rest assured that we are here to support you and to make sure that you uh, you are well accommodated and in Baku. Uh, then uh, there was a point regarding the city buses and, and transportation. The city buses will be available for all the for everyone, regardless of whether they are the co participants or not. And whereas the shuttle buses uh, will be provided uh, specifically for the COP29 participants. And uh, we will soon uh, provide uh, provide you with the uh, um, maps on the transportation hubs. But uh, let me run, uh, once again state that uh, the transportation hubs are in very close proximity of the hotels uh, that are in the network platform. Uh, if uh, if if to be even further, uh, if if you want even further details on that, every hotel. It has a distance of two kilometers maximum to the transportation hubs, um, but uh, we will uh, avail uh, in upcoming months in due time uh, the map uh, for your ease. Um, yes, and if uh, will aid you. Thank you. I would like to add here uh, to the transition to what Shahwar said, my colleague. Uh, transportation hubs cover the whole Baku and the inner Baku and outside Baku. And the two, these two kilometer coverage, the maximum distance, is the outside area, urban area of the Baku. In the inner city, in the city center, it's much closer, and you can even just walk to the hubs. And uh, they are, when we selected these hubs, we have uh, referred to the previous experience and also our experts, local staff 
with the engagement with the navigation of the city and mapping. And therefore, uh, they, are, they are accessible and they are reachable. Uh, and uh, uh, when you just take the outside, not the within the city setting, but also suburban areas, you can feel comfortable that uh, you can get access and you can reach the, this transport hubs. Uh, and then we will release and officially put on the, our website very soon transportation hub map and then you can easily check them and it will be electronic and digital. Thank you very much. Uh, just to add one single point in the transportation measures taking uh, and, hot, and house. The biggest hub is uh, nearest the Baku Stadium itself uh, with one metro station and uh, bus stations, numerous bus stations and taxi stops around the venue uh, and those are uh, well accessible, free of charge and uh, very um, up-to-date and modern facilities. Uh, and same is true for the public transport facilities around the hotel and accommodation, especially in the central parts of the city. And having said that, we will strongly encourage you all uh, to often use the public transportation from sustainability, sustainability perspective of the event. Thank you. Uh, I would like to proceed uh, to the question uh, from uh, uh, Gabon uh, regarding the high-level accommodation options. So, uh, yes, uh, Azerbaijani government will provide uh, one plus three uh, hotel rooms for the uh, delegations represented by the head of state or head of government. Um, for us, uh, to give you further information on the uh, on, on on this accommodation and details with regard to the hotel, etc., we need your con confirmation. So as soon as you will confirm your participation on that level, uh, we will follow up uh, your confirmation and then uh, in details we'll discuss uh, the, um, the, the further plans. Thank you. So, uh, so yes, we are waiting for uh, the confirmation from the uh, parties uh, to further uh, to avail further details on the accommodation. Thank you. Uh, I would like to jump to the another question regarding the taxes. Uh, I would like to add that value-added taxes and custom duties imported for the imported goods and the services outside uh, will be exempted, and also it will be withholding taxes for the non-residents will be exempted. Uh, and it is the in a force from the first of the March until the end of the year. That's why uh, we will release this information uh, and also uh, decree has already approved yesterday uh, and we will release very soon and it is publicly available document. I would like to take the question uh, with regards to my colleague's uh, question on uh, SOCAR's involvement in organizing committee of COP29. Uh, uh, as you know, previous uh, COP advisory and organizing committees have included individuals who hold multiple responsibilities, including in the energy sector. And uh, climate action requires the active involvement of all multiple stakeholders with different experiences and backgrounds and uh, it's no doubt that certain ministers and state officials, because of the position they hold in the government, must sit on the organiza organizational committee to provide the requisite technical, uh, organizational, and administrative oversight to ensure the success of the COP29. And of course, uh, we aim that all COP29 organizing committee members, including SOCAR, are committed to achieving the goals and ambitions of the pri uh, Paris climate uh, agreement, uh, keeping 1.5 uh, within reach. Um, and um, I, I also would like to give you information about SOCAR's engagement uh, with regards to COP28 uh, UAE oil and gas decarbonization charter, uh, which includes also a commitment to the Paris climate agreement. And uh, we, we really don't see that there is any problem involved with its participation in our organizing committee. Thank you. Okay, I think there was one question that I can address, which is on the presentation. So the webcast of the COP president's uh, presentation and Nami's presentation are already available on the UNFCCC website.
the presentation that accompanies them will be uploaded shortly, so do please point your colleagues in capitals uh, towards those. We were supposed to finish, but I will take another round of questions. I'm going to have to close the, the list uh, after that, uh, so we can make sure that the room is available for the next set of meetings. So I'm going to start off with the Netherlands, please. Thank you, and uh, thank you to everyone on the podium for the presentation and for all the work that's already gone into uh, the logistics for uh, our COP29. Um, I can affirm that we are very much looking forward to being at COP29 in Baku, um, but I must also echo concerns that we've heard uh, in the room today from Marshall Islands, Ghana, Switzerland, and, and many others. Um, just for illustration, we got a rate uh, early this year for the hotel accommodation of around 350 USD, and uh, were later presented with a three to four fold increase, which is also for us far beyond our daily allowance rates. Um, I would also want to share here our concerns, what uh, this means for an already stretched trust for, for participation. Um, uh, next to that, um, we do very much welcome the willingness shown by the incoming presidency to engage with cases like the one brought forward from, uh, by our colleague from the Marshall Islands. But I would also ask you to look for a solution for all parties uh, and not on a case-by-case -case basis. Um, in a slightly separate issue, um, the flexibility uh, for the booking platform and the cut-off date for the, for the reservations, um, which I believe is now June 12th, um, does not align with uh, the action agenda announcement, which we are told not to expect until later in July. Um, and that makes it very difficult for us and I'm sure also other delegations to book the necessary rooms for ministers and other high level dignitaries who would participate in those events outside of the negotiations. Um, I would really like to ask you what would be done to address this very last point. And finally, I would like to underscore the importance of uh, inclusivity for civil society in the COP process, um, both in terms of the accommodation, as we've heard colleagues around the room, but also their presence. Thank you. Thank you very much. I'm now going to hand over to nameplate 264. Thank you very much. Uh, I'm Azuko Jenny, human rights activist and climate with defender Emil Sinov, which is supposed to operate from exile. My question is regarding logistic for a meaningful participation of Azerbaijani exile based climate rights defenders community. Because, for example, I'm a refugee in Switzerland, I have a refugee travel document, and I'm a status person because government of Azerbaijan debated my citizenship. I would love to be participate in this meaningful discussions which the government of Azerbaijan kindly promises to all of us. We appreciate of all of these promises, but we would like to understand the reality for example, how I am, or many others, my colleagues, who also make, have the same concerns regarding security, uh, able to participate in my first question regarding the Green Zone. Since 2015, Azerbaijan, the law enforcement agencies prohibited for civil society implement their rights for freedom of assembly and associations and you will give us promises for you able to do some kind of uh, actions, climate actions, human rights actions in the green zone, but realistically what we observed in Azerbaijan since 2015, freedom of association and assembly is restricted. And concern regarding the journalists and human rights defenders who want to participate in the Azerbaijan human rights defenders, some of our colleagues jailed 300 of uh, them now under uh, arbitrary detention or imprisoned. Is it possible to release all of these people because they are not able to participate from the jails on such kind of important event? And we believe if Azerbaijan organizes such kind of important event, it's an event about climate diplomacy, and it, we sometimes we receive the questions for why you are trying to do this. We are not politicized, we believe. We are absolutely in solidarity with Azerbaijan government call for the green world, but we believe we need to live in the green world and just plant like just with justice in everywhere, justice for climate, justice for habitat. I thank you for this question. Thank you, Chair, and uh, 
thank you to all the speakers on the podium for the presentation, the briefing, and we would like to comment you on the work you have done so far and the little time you had. And uh, I do not have a question, but I wish to echo what some others, my colleagues from Marshall Islands, Sicily, and Ghana, the Netherlands, have said on the challenges related to hotel bookings, the prices, and the platform. For Germany, the size of our delegation is dependent also on the action against agenda and the thematic tastes. And this, as the Netherlands has said, does not correspond, that correspond with the deadline for the hotel bookings and the cancellations. And indeed, the six days minimum booking is in this regard also difficult to handle for us, in particular for our high level participation. Uh, as the Netherlands, we would also encourage you to find a universal solution uh, for these questions. And for inclusivity and transparency, we would also encourage you to make the host country agreement uh, with you and actually with the public once finalized. We wish you every success with the further uh, organization, and we are very much looking Okay, as a sugar growing um, list of speakers and as the director of conference affairs, I do need to lead by example to ensure that our meetings finish on time and that we can transition to the next one. So I do ask Holly to keep the questions uh, as short as they possibly can. And I'll hand over to the stage of Palestine. Thank you, apologies, I'm not on the Palestinian delegation, but my question is a clarification on uh, bookings outside of the platform. Originally we were told the platform was created to unify bookings and that it was not possible to book through other platforms, so can you please um, clarify that and um, also clarify if this communication has been shared with the requisite hotels and what are the um, process, what is the process to follow if you want to look outside the platform and if you can also clarify the cancellation policy brought up by other delegations. Thank you. Thank you. Now over to the Cook Islands. Uh, thank you, Secretary. I'd like to express our uh, thanks to the incoming uh, presidency for your presentation and the government's um, work and arrangements thus far. I'd like to support the sentiments expressed by our colleagues in the room earlier, but also ask if you could provide us with uh, information on when you would confirm arrangements for those that put forth the applications for pavilions um, under your expression of interest uh, when they close. But could I also propose that the income, incoming presidency uh, provide Foreign, foreign exchange currency places at the venue along with ATMs to make it a bit easier for delegations to uh, make the necessary uh, transaction exchanges. And uh, finally, if I could suggest that uh, in your discussions with uh, hoteliers, you could discuss with them flexibility around the minimum stay of, um, of the high level delegations, uh, given the fact that they tend to uh, have a shorter stay due to uh, the demand on their schedules, what other activities given the time of, uh, of the year. Thank you very much. Okay, I've now got the f uh, our final speaker for today, and that's Uzbekistan. Thank you very much. Uh, Uzbekistan would like to extend our congratulations to the incoming presidency. Uh, of 29 to our brotherly nation uh, Azerbaijan and I think it's, it's a big event not only for Azerbaijan but for all the countries um, in the region as well. I have a comment and, and a question. So the, the first question is um, will there be any common areas uh, that will be available for bookings of, uh, for side events and high level um, uh, negotiations and meetings apart from the offices that are mentioned on the website? And just a short note um, from our experience uh, with the pavilions, I hope the attention will be paid also to uh, service and maintenance because we, we did experience substantial issues with uh, issues like cleaning and technical maintenance, sound, uh, air conditioning, uh, while uh, having the pavilion at COPS. Thank you very much. 
Okay, thank you very much. I'm going to close the speakers there. And uh, before I hand over to the presidency, I think there's one question from Germany that I can respond to. In terms of the most country agreement, which is currently under discussion between uh, Azerbaijan and UNFCCC, once that finalized and signed, it will be lodged with the treaty section of the uh, UN Secretariat and is available on, uh, on demand from there. So after that, I'll hand over to the presidency who's going to come and go first. beyond the platform. The platform is not mandatory, but we strongly advise you to go through and book your accommodation through this platform because the, plat the rooms and hotels and rooms available at the platform have gone through uh, detailed um, verification uh, and, and, and have, have been through thoroughly analyzed um, for their quality, um, distance to the transportation hub, and uh, Apart from that, we will avail additional hospitality services uh, to those who have booked their uh, accommodation through this platform. Uh, I believe, uh, and yes, we will take, uh, once again, I want to make clear that we will take your concerns back and to see uh, if we can do something regarding the uh, policies uh, on the network. But once I want to highlight one that it's a separate platform. Uh, they have their own uh, rules and procedures, uh, but we'll try to, our, uh, to, we'll try to do our best. Uh, thank you. But we strongly advise you not bring too much cash with you because we have, will have the, at least the two ATMs within the venue area and the, all the Almost the, all the hotels has their cash machine, ATM machines, and the whole within the city you can use their cash machines and so on. But even I don't think that you will need it because the, within the hotels and the venue area you can use the cards or other uh, NFC devices to pay for the catering and other services. Uh, that's why uh, foreign exchange is not a problem if it's not it's the convertible cards, and uh, uh, we, we are strongly to be to save side, we strongly advise you not to bring them too much cash, don't no necessarily. Yes. Thank you. Uh, maybe I wanted to ask regarding the uh, prices and policies that um, the main models of your concerns that uh, raised, uh, have caused uh, Situation of your concern are the international chain hotels. I mean, as it was reiterated, it was said before, we don't have any uh, control over their prices. We can advise, but we cannot control. Uh, but we are um, in parallel while trying to avail more accommodation options for you through the platform so that it covers uh, all the price ranges. Thank you. I would like to answer the question with regards to the uh, registration of uh, delegates uh, to UNFCCC. I would like to say that it is uh, totally uh, managed and uh, found by uh, UNFCCC relevant uh, team. And uh, maybe Vasim later can comment more on this. Uh, as for the freedom of assembly, Azerbaijan will ensure that everyone has uh, freedom of expression during the event. They will avail uh, certain areas, both inside and outside of the blue zone, for uh, protests and any uh, demonstrations that we are planning. And as for the uh, other accusations, uh, I'm sure that we are not uh, we, uh, we are not in the capacity to comment on ongoing cases that is uh, that falls under the jurisdiction of legal authorities. Thank you. Uh, there was a question on the pavilions as well. Thank you for your question. 
So as mentioned earlier by our colleagues, uh, the portal is live, up and running, and we're uh, collecting many requests, expression of interest for civilians and delegate offices. The uh, deadline is on uh, 15 June, and our recommendation is uh, to hurry because the interest is very immense and the deadline is close. Um, then the allocation of the space will be organized and arranged in coordination with UN, UNFCCC. Um, on early July, we will uh, announce the results of the uh, space allocations for the Blue Zone pavilions as well as the delegation, delegation offices. And the next question was about the site events, uh, meetings uh, in the Blue Zone. Well, as it is a standard process for all COPs, we're uh, collecting requirements and requests through UNFCCC and uh, with total coordination and alignment with UNFCCC um, Secretariat. All requests are collected and, uh, according to the demand and registration. All the requests will be accommodated and I would say the deadline will, that will be earlier, uh, early September or mid-September so that all the submissions can be made by that deadline so that all the requests can be uh, timely accommodated. And the next question was about the cleaning and the waste management. And I can ensure you that we have a dedicated team of um, department and team who will be focused more on these uh, logistic issues. And we also brought an uh, awarded uh, professional vendor who has uh, a track record of experience in COP events and uh, conferences. So uh, all the cleaning and waste management uh, services will be insured and will be in place. And there will be also on-demand uh, services for this uh, specific area. If you uh, have those uh, requirements, the portal will be live soon and we will announce it through the website of UNF Triple C as well as the COP29.AD website so that you can uh, start some of your requests and uh, requirements. Thank you. Okay, thank you very much everybody. We've had a lot of questions, but clearly a lot of interest in, in COP29. Uh, a couple of final points uh, from me, just a reminder in terms of um, the venue for COP29, uh, the Blue Zone, like this current venue, will be UN territory, so it's important to remember the same privileges that apply to UN territory as this venue will apply there. And the key thing to bear in mind is the code of conduct as it is here, so please do bear that in mind if you're in the, uh, in the Blue Zone at COP29. In terms of registration for COP29, that will open shortly after the end of the SPP session. Again, we try and uh, separate that out from the SPPs to avoid any confusion around registration. So look out for registration open shortly after the SPPs. And for further information, uh, do go to the uh, COP29 website, but also on the UNFCCC website. We've now launched the information for participants for COP29, so information will be uploaded onto that site as it becomes available. So just keep looking back on that information not currently there. So with that, I'd like to uh, thank you all for your question, but I'd particularly like to thank the uh, COP29 operations team for their patience and for diligently answering all the questions. Thank you.